welcome to the Full Charge Power Hour Reboot <laughs> Episode 2. Um, uh, back to the announcements. I forgot. We still have a Patreon. Patreon.com oh. forward slash the Full Charge. We're back in business. Look at that. If you are signed up, you will be billed <laughs> on <laughs> June 1st. So look alive. Nice. If you're missing $5, you gave it to me. Uh, <laughs> Brian Irwin is our guest. I'm here. Boom. I haven't hosted in so long. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to introduce the guest. That's okay. That's Even if right. you didn't, it's fine. <laughs> I'm at that point in my life. It's so, like, just being here is good enough. Yeah. No, well, it's nice to have you. Dude, it's, I'm stoked. It's nice to be back in Los Angeles. It is. And feel the flow of all the friendships. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 20 yeah. plus years. Easy. Easy. Yeah. So Barzur, the old Barzur gang. Yeah. So we were part of something that I don't know if it really happens anymore. Um, definitely not to the extent we were involved. There was like an open mic circuit in the late 90s. Right. That right. we were all a part of. And it really was a comedy club, if you think about it. Yeah. We weren't really performing in front of regular paid audiences nope. so much as we were performing in front of each other. And just coming up with five minutes every week and then just throwing that five minutes away and then doing another five minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it got to the point where it was just like, if you went up, you didn't have to win me over because I already knew you and I already liked you. Yeah. And you could just do your new five minutes that was like C material and mm -hmm. I'd be right on board with it because I know who you are. Yeah, right. Yeah. And right. then like you get to like a paying gig and you're like, you got to win everybody over. It was, I did amateur comedy for so many years, like, I don't know, three years on the open mics. And then there would be, I would do bringer shows and I would think that was a professional show. Yeah. Right. right? I would yeah. think that was a professional show. Without a doubt. But it was really just a bunch of different patches of people going to see their friends. Yeah, um, they'd hold on to their laughs just like people hold on to likes on the internet. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They did. I'm not gonna laugh at this guy because yeah. he's not my friend. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Unless you were really funny and they were like, "Sorry, that slipped out." Uh, that was a good cocaine joke. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Sorry, Tommy. What can I tell you? Well, it was Sorry. a Sunset Strip, me. so it was probably yeah. cocaine jokes will always fly <laughs> yeah. really well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. true. It's true. You used to run a show out of the Comedy Store, which is Valley like room. Yeah. That's kind of like a, that's a hybrid. Yeah. Right. Because there would be people coming from all over and they'd, they'd be like, well, there's seats left in the belly room. Yep. And so they would come in and, and, and we'd have like regular audience audience members up there. Yeah. yeah. But there was, and the good thing about that too, is that the club also booked. So 50% of it was actual club comedians. Yeah. For the comedy store comedians. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it was people who helped put butts in seats. Yeah. So it could, it got rough around the edges sometimes. Yeah. But every once in a while, I mean, even some of those bringers, you know, they delivered unintentionally. Yeah. But <laughs> it was entertaining yeah. nonetheless. I did a bringer. I used to do a bringer there on Saturday night, and it would go for like three or four hours. Oh, and so my cool. friends would just be like sitting around waiting. And you're talking about watching like 35 comics. And That's like awful. half of them were terrible. Yeah, you know? you're like, this isn't Woodstock. <laughs> no, and but th think about yeah, exactly. Now, so think about this for a second. This is how ignorant mm -hmm. and arrogant we were as young comedians. We were telling people we know to come and sit through 35 yeah. comedians and didn't think anything of it that it would torture these people yeah. that we have. I didn't buy anybody a drink. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't like thank anybody for coming out. Uh, yeah, I was just like, "You're welcome." I fucking crushed it for six minutes, yeah. right? You also yeah. never saw them again right. after that. That's nope. a lot of. I would keep inviting them. I would keep inviting everyone at work, and you know the well is dry after about two. It's true. You know they're like, "I'm never coming to one of your shows again." <laughs> Surprisingly, some people like supportive people like actors. Or writers, sure. where they would come out because they knew the deal. Yeah, right. Uh, and they would right. just, and then you could get real notes, like not as good as last week, <laughs> probably because <laughs> I heard that shit already, and I was the only one laughing last <laughs> real week. Notes. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this city. I, I learned very early on that this city has been burned so many times by comedy. Yes. Right? Or one man shows or one woman oh, shows. Oh man. You know, because every every place that has a door, yeah, is considered an opportunity for a show, yeah. right? Yeah. 
in Los Angeles, yeah. and every one of those doors has probably been opened with a show, and they're say. like, yeah, no, we actually stopped doing that stuff 15 years ago because well, it killed our business. Well, on, like, Santa, oh. on Santa Monica Boulevard, this is even in La La Land, on Santa Monica Boulevard, there's like, I don't know, like eight playhouses? Yeah. Yeah. And in North Hollywood, too? Oh, and yeah. And... You know, I've like, done one of those. There's like these tiny like theater district, and people invite people out, and we're we're past the one man show era, I think. Thank God. Right. We, I, I had a friend who had a really good one, but other than that, I can't imagine going and sitting through a one man an hour or like one man show where you're like. You're all over the apartment. You're sitting in this chair, and, and you're like at the at the kitchen. Yeah, do that prop work, dude. Right. You know what I mean, like, and now like, I'm gonna be my mom. Yeah, <laughs> you're not supposed to say that out loud as yeah. you transition into that part. <laughs> that is true. The internet has kind of turned t taken over the one man show, the so one, you don't have to do that. And the one man anymore. show is more palatable on the internet. It's yeah. a minute a day. Yeah, <laughs> right. As opposed and also a choice a half an to hour. opt out. Yeah, yeah, like zip, zip. You know. <laughs> So uh, it's too good. That's uh, the olden days. Yeah, it was. It was definitely a different time. It definitely. And we, we did a TV pilot live, like it was a play. Yeah. With uh, Mike Black wrote it. Yeah. And I sh we should have him on. The, we could talk about it. But we he wrote this weird ass show yeah. that we did uh, live. See, but that's fun because you're my friends. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I did. I was in the Tosh.0 oh pilot that took place in one of those theaters on Santa Monica. Yeah. We did it live. I came out. I don't know if you remember the viral sensation of you just been kicked in the nuts. Oh, yeah. But oh, I played the guy. <laughs> I came out and I kicked Daniel in the nuts. He wore a cup the whole so you presentation. Would, okay, because you so couldn't I, fake oh. it. He didn't want me to. Oh, he wanted you to really. It wasn't about him. my abilities. Oh, okay. He was like, I'm going to wear a cup and you're going to kick me in the nuts. And I just go, my friend, my friend. I put to the camera, you just been kicked in the nuts. <laughs> that's too good. <laughs> you got that on tape somewhere you can play back later? Uh, I don't know if that's on tape. Oh, they it's they had him redo it, you know? They had him redo it. So I, did, I didn't make the second pilot. <laughs> that's the, the, the first one's somewhere with that. You got to get a hold of that. That would be so sad if I was replaced by another guy in a wig who could kick him in the nuts better. <laughs> just a little yeah. better. Wait, you, you did some wig work on better. that too? Huh? You yeah, I work? dressed up like the guy. Okay. Oh, why, okay. why bother if you're not going to... That's like, right. You know? Okay. You know? Matt's a... Fucking, yeah, he's going all in, dude. What Again, method? not my idea. I Method just actor. Up, they put the wig on me. Kick me, you know, kick me in the nuts. And it's a cup. It still hurts like around <laughs> For the sure. edges. For sure. Of course. You know? so, it's got to. Yeah. <laughs> Hollywood. Yeah. Old time entertainment. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm here for it. So we got segments on the show now. Sweet. Which I'm, uh, you know, let's just get into them. Let's do. Let's the get segment. into the segments. Okay. Segments have never been our thing. Right. We've just come out here and bullshitted, and then yeah. Wendell came on and we fucking cracked on Wendell. Right. And um, bullshitted some more. And so here we are. I I came up with this one high point, low point, and I actually have two high points and two low points. Nice. This, the the first high point, obviously. Um, you guys mentioned it on my Instagram. I went on tour with Tom Segura. Talk about doing shows in the belly room. And then it, it actually working <laughs> oh, out. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys know this. Tom Segura has a career now. It's huge. It's like... Unbelievably he's, huge. He's doing arenas. Yeah. And he's yeah. nice enough to bring me along. That's pretty great. And it's just like I realized this has gone beyond my comedy dreams. Like my comedy dreams always took place in a, a comedy club. Sure, because that's what you're raised on, though. That's what you know. Arizona, please give it up for. <laughs> when you when you start out, like, did you guys think past clubs? I no. did it because it wasn't that common to no. even do a theater back then. No, yeah, no. you're tra you're talking about a handful of comedians that ever, and even in our time, lifetime, that were like considered that 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 big where you could do that type of stuff. Steve Martin, I know Dice Clay for a while sure. was yeah. doing it. But that's it. That's it. Those two know, guys. Carl, yeah, maybe rock star bit, level. Yeah. 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 Everything else was theaters. And when I was lucky enough to do some theaters with, with Daniel Tosh, and then as Tom's career, that was like, oh, this is the ultimate. Yeah. And I do think theaters are the ultimate, but are, the arenas are still an experience because that's where you're- that's um, unbelievable. My wife pointed it out to me, and then I realized that even after that is like, this is the music dream. 
right? Yeah. Like we've all had the music dream. That's the band level dream of like, dude, there's like <laughs> 5,000 people here. Now you know the rush they get and why they do what they do, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Now Steve Martin said in his book, he talked about the difficulty of doing stand up to that large of an audience as the wave of laughter is a little bit confusing and it yeah. can mess with your timing. Did you find that to be the case? It's definitely the case. And it always takes me one show to get used to that again. Because you don't get used to playing arenas. Right. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> you best not, son. Right. And God help you if you do. <laughs> <laughs> Your ego level is just like, woo. Hey, I um, said poached eggs, motherfucker. <laughs> and so, like, but then, so in Nashville, like, I felt the nerves when I got on stage. That was the first show. Even though I'd done it before and I took a beta blocker pill, I was still just like, the first three jokes, I was like, nah, like, just hold it together, dude. Oh just hold God, it together. Yeah. Because you just, like, every molecule in your body just wants to explode out of your fucking, yourself. And, and, but then I, I was still fine. You know, I've done this enough to just be like, take a deep breath, relax, go slow. And then there was like, I didn't eat, I didn't eat dinner and there was an after party in Nashville. So I ended up drinking, like really drinking, like sport level. Oh, um, <laughs> like an competitive athlete. drinking. Guy. Yeah. Okay. So then the next, well, I'm going to win this the next day and Charlotte, North Carolina, I was hangovers are horrible, especially as you get older. Right. But let's be honest they can be good for a performance so it tamed you yeah you just you don't give a shit you're relaxed yeah, right. and yes at that point i was talking very slowly and just waiting like waiting for the to hit and come back it's like a message in a bottle and you got it plenty of stage out. to work right yeah exactly <laughs> but that's another thing you're like so far away from everybody there's a front row yeah but there's still like that Oh, that sure. distance between even the front row and you're so far away from everybody that when you can chill out, it's kind of amazing because you're just sitting on like a helicopter pad. <laughs> <laughs> so distant. talking to it's like the Lion King or something like I'm on top of the cliff. <laughs> just oh. holding up the joke, you know, <laughs> <laughs> bear um, witness. And then by and then by the where was I Raleigh after that, I was just cold chilling and talking like incredibly to the point where like is this too slow but there was an echo in that arena so i was definitely speaking slowly and um it's just nuts the travel i mean we woke up on saturday in nashville flew to uh charlotte did a show and then flew to raleigh and spent the night in raleigh police escort we had a police escort oh. in the airport to Dang. the airport. No, oh, okay. Not in on the, the air. ground. No, okay. in the no air. I don't shit. know. Yeah, we had a couple stealth it... bombers. <laughs> <laughs> Keep low, boys. I mean, some people are so successful, they may need it in the sky yeah, too. No, no. A we... fucking police escort because uh, there were two people in the streets. No, um, I think you it can was... pay for them. Why do you? Why do you get it? I don't really know. I'll take, you're like, I'll take it. We were all. We pulled out of the um, the arena, and. You know, we're in a car and then all of a sudden the police lights are on and the sirens are on. Yeah. And that's when Tom informs me, we have a police escort. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I don't know why. I don't think for any real good reason. I think this is just your tax dollars. Hey, maybe. <laughs> yeah. For no good reason. Maybe in but Charlottesville, it, they're like, look, you paid for it. You get it. All right, dude. Yeah. I don't know how you can even pay for it. Like, I don't know. Can I you, think can you, you can't pay the cops to no, do stuff that's, for you. That's private. That's like yeah. in production. Sure. Like it's the same thing. Do. It's overtime. It's paid. It's probably paid privately. My guess is the promoter probably puts it together. Yeah. But that's still got to feel pretty good to be surrounded. Like, you know, it's, it's the only time you can see lights and feel like, yeah, we're all we're together not on this. Yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah. It's just, it's really cool. You never think you're going to be. That's a president's gift. Do it. Yeah. You never think you're going to be doing that. And I almost felt bad for the, the driver who was driving us because like he's going. And I'm also like, are people really going to stop through <laughs> well, a red light on Saturday night? Yeah. You're going to get out of the way. You're like, right. Like, cause like the first cop car goes through and then there's us. And then there's another cop car. Like, are people really going to stop? There? So that's the and thing, uh, too. You don't have to stop anywhere. Is that what you're right, saying? That's this what, is like, you get a blow through, dude. That's the whole point of it. It's a speed thing, like to get to the... Right. Okay. Uh, I don't trust it. I don't trust anything. I'm a worrier. I'm like, are we really... Are people really going to respect this shit? Uh, they did. 
They and do. I, I, I was, and I also very like empathetic. I get stressed out for other people. So now I'm stressed out for the driver because I know I, <laughs> I know as a driver, I don't think I would like it. I like to just like leave three hours early and just stop at every yellow light. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'll pay the extra thousand dollars. Let's get a police escort. But the, but at one point, uh, somebody asked the driver, sir, do you enjoy this? And he was like, oh, I love it. And I was like, OK, cool. Good enough. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yep. I mm-hmm. don't stop for shit. Right. I know when I've gotten off a set and I'll be like the last person and the police are still there and I'm like pulling out and they'll be like, rip, rip. They'll block the road. And I'm like, ah, it's not necessary. <laughs> it's, but whatever. They're like, we're here I 12 guess, hours we're a day doing too. It. Yeah. They're like 82, 50 an hour, buddy. I thought you were going to say you asked if you could ride bitch on the motorcycle. No, the car. that's <laughs> never going to happen. Sweet, dude. <laughs> yeah. Ask an LAPD. Hey, can I ride on the back? No. <laughs> I'll hold on tight, officer. Yeah. No fruit knuckle. I brought my own helmet. They're like, (laughs) you come near me, boy. I'm putting one in you. (laughs) Uh, uh, Then my first low point was, and this is just dumb. And this, this factors into the, the whole, the whole driving thing is I was doing a show at this restaurant, which I never been to. This is in LA called Yamashiro. Okay. Or something like that. It's above you know the Magic Castle in Hollywood? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was okay. There's, a, okay. there's yeah. a restaurant even higher than that. It's a Japanese restaurant. Oh. And it's gorgeous. There's like this big, huge patio. You get to, you get to see all of L.A. at night. And ah. then it used to be some, you know, rich person's house 100 years ago. Oh, okay. And it's totally decked out like Kill Bill Volume 1 with like the koi pond. <laughs> yeah. And the big area. Sure. And, and it's just amazing. And the valet was taken care of, but I I'm just I got there early because as you as I do I just I leave everywhere early because I don't feel like being yeah. stressed out, and I just kind of parked around like, you know, past the Hollywood Boulevard madness, and I go, well I can just I can just walk up to this restaurant because I hate <laughs> I hate valet for some reason I just hate it. You're sure. uncomfortable with. I it. hate the whole transaction of it. I don't know why. I'm not saying it makes any sense. Uh, somebody else in my car, someone else driving off with the car. Right. The whole weird thing where That's like, fair. you know, I, I don't know. I, this is something that I, I don't like about it. And so I'll just, I'll just walk up. I'm here early. And I did the thing where you're walking up. I don't know if you guys have ever been on foot in the Hollywood Hills. I used to uh, do it at the comedy store as well. And oh. you're almost getting hit by a car. Yes. Every like 30 seconds. And yeah. you're also like, this is my fucking fault. <laughs> it's and narrow. I, and if I go, this is how I'll be remembered. And rightfully so for being the dumbest fucking idiot. Fucking Matt in walked the world. in LA. So I'm just sitting here like with my um I got my phone on the flashlight. Just like <laughs> so holding it up like don't while well, they're coming they're coming, you know, they're drinking at the restaurant. Right. Uh, you know, and then I by the time I got up to the gig, I was sweating. It's high. And so I had to sit there and relax and be like, because you don't want the sweat to carry on into the show. No, because then you look like that guy. <laughs> right. Right. And at this, at my age, I have so many hair products and shit in my <laughs> oh hair. My God, I'll probably like Giuliani yeah. the whole fucking set. <laughs> you know I was I mean? already wondering, like, was it a lot farther than you thought? It was a lot. It was, it was just like, I don't know, uh, a 200 foot stretch of like complete danger. <laughs> so it wasn't that it wasn't that far. It was just like you're not supposed to be on this yeah, road. Yeah, walking. You're gonna get hit, and it's not even about getting hit. It's just about being an asshole. Hi, I'm an asshole. Nice to meet you. Fifty years old, haven't learned a goddamn thing in my life. <laughs> this is how I die, and for, doing, no, for no good reason. Just for doing no some good calf reason. workouts yeah. because uh, yeah. the incline is what makes it seem like it takes forever. That part. That's the hill. That's the part that kills you. You don't think. Yeah. And then you're walking and you feel like you walked 17 miles to go 400 right, feet right. because of the steep incline. Yeah, right. And so and, it was- And turns. It was just, it, yeah, that, that, was, that, was, that was low. Now I have an alternate high-low because it's been a busy week. And we haven't podcasted in two weeks. Uh, <laughs> did a show at the Comedy Store last night. All right. Uh, main room, Ian Bag. Nice. Uh, which Ian Bag's social media has really taken off yeah, and he's got up. a big following now. And it might have been the sweetest fucking show I ever did. Okay. It was just like, okay. I. it was like, you ever do a, a show and you're like, 
well, I'm getting much more than I deserve right now. <laughs> and like, it's just coming at you. And you can't, and I even stumbled through one punchline and still got and a they laugh. Still, they loved yeah, it. Yeah, just got it. It was only a 10 minute set. Excellent. It was great. And then I'm going, I'm not going to call out this club. I'm like, well, I got to go to this other club. It's, it's called a comedy club. Club is in the title. <laughs> oh, no. And I went there. And just side note, and, and I, I forgot my phone. I don't know if you've ever done this in 2024, but it's the weirdest thing because it's like leaving part of your brain yeah. at home and also part of your memory because you're like, oh, I'm going to take a, st- a picture of Ian. On- I'm not taking a picture of Ian. <laughs> also, I'm a married guy now. Your wife thinks you're dead if you don't text That's back right. at yeah. least yeah. once yeah. an hour. Yeah. Dead in the gutter. So I actually had to grab Ian's phone and like text her. And, and also like, I don't even know where the second gig is. I have to ask somebody with the phone, like, hey, can you look up this address for me? <laughs> Crazy, right? Like, the, it's just like your open book test of life is oh, just, yeah. it's just gone. But there is something very freeing about it. Yeah. Just no. Sure. And like, if, if, if you're in an awkward situation in the green room or whatever, you don't just like pull up the phone. Because the phone is comforting for a second, right? But then what do you look up? Oh, the end of democracy is this year. <laughs> this is comforting. Sweet. It is so different, right? Going back to what we were talking about before, about when we first started, you know, the only people that were antisocial in the green rooms or waiting to go up were the ones that just kind of had their head buried in their notes for yes. the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But otherwise, that was when you socialized right. as a comedian. You you didn't, you, you kind of, most comedians, I was trying to explain this to a friend of mine who is not in the business. He didn't understand why don't comedians talk to people? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit of Asperger's. Maybe sure. it's a little bit of just who they are as yeah. people. That's just not their thing. Mm-hmm. And I said, they're comfortable talking to other comedians in, in back rooms and stuff like that. That's not just a, what they do. Now, not, I don't know if that's the case anymore since I, cell phones. I think that is the case. And I still work with people all the time that I don't know at all, other comedians. Right. And it's just like, boom, like we're all telling the truth to each other. I don't know this guy in the green room right. at the Borgata in Atlantic City. He's going to ask me something incredibly personal, and I'm going to answer him truthfully. But you Be- wouldn't do that with a regular person. A regular person is not going to ask me. Well, They're yeah. going to be like, right. how was your weekend? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What did you exactly. do? And how long have you been married? And why did you yes. move back to Los Angeles? Nobody wants to have this conversation. Yeah, dude. You're just having it. So it's not awkward. Right. Karen is an introvert, my wife, Mm -hmm. total introvert, doesn't like to go out with people Mm -hmm. often, but I'm like, oh, you used to go hang out all the time. Yeah. She she goes, yeah, dude, all your friends are musicians and comedians. They're like the fucking most interesting people on the planet. Yeah. She's all, what, we want to go to this barbecue and talk about fucking Tom's day at work? (laughs) She's all, not interested. You talk about like... What do you you know too? We you, you go to the barbecue and you talk about work, mm-hmm. and now we're to the point where we talk about health. And yeah, the, <laughs> who's still alive? <laughs> and like, and like, uh, oh, and this and this is this is the gray area is uh, what streaming television show uh, yeah. you're watching? Yeah. Oh, that's a good show. Oh, that's a, oh, oh, but you want to know a really good show? Yeah, is this show? Oh, that's the show. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I think I'm gonna take my life. <laughs> I've gotten to the point where I know people where we talk about a podcast that talks about the shows. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you remember when he said that he liked the part in the show where they did this? That was a funny take on that show. Like, like it's just, it's insanity. Uh, it is. So anyway, I go to this comedy club and, and, and it's, it's, it's just, okay. So did the stadiums, did the arenas, incredible tour. Did the comedy store, incredible. You know, I just got back to LA, it was yeah. so fucking great. Yeah. And then I walk into this thing and it's just like a closet that goes back and there's only six people in there and I'm walking back to the mm. bathroom and I hear this one guy say to this woman, he goes, you're a comedian too, right? And she goes, yeah, and I go, Oh, this is just like a couple of comedians. Right. We're back where we started. And I went to the bathroom and then I just walked out. 
<laughs> and I got in my car. <laughs> I drove away. And I fucking drove away. Because yeah. you can do that. You did. Not, you, how long did it take you before you realized yeah. these, that you can actually do that and not worry that it's going to affect you at your journey? I, I'll tell you my process. I, I went back to the bathroom and I looked at myself in the mirror and I go, yeah, you should go tell the guy that you don't want to do the show. No, first I go, well, you should just do it. You're here. You mm -hmm. don't want to let this guy down. He booked you. Right. And then, I, and this is all going very quickly, but I, this is like, I'll slow, <laughs> I'll slow it down for you. And I go, it's 940 at night. The show was supposed to start at 930. Oof. There's nobody here. This is not a comedy club. There's no wait staff. There's no food. There's not oh. even any beers for sale. Oh. Uh, they've advertised. They've used my name and my image. Now, granted, that's not a great way to get people out. <laughs> use my name. I'm always trying to sell myself. It's a difficult yeah. process. But still, yeah. let's say, and this isn't the best argument for this scenario, let's say like somebody, people do come to see me. Yeah. And let's say they went to that fucking place instead of the comedy store. They get all the money. I get no money yep. and then my fans have a bad time and I just go why am I gonna have why are we gonna put in an hour and a half two hours to do seven minutes in front of six comics who are probably gonna leave I'm like I don't owe this guy anything this guy I'm I, I'm never playing this place ever I'm there's no way this place could become good <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I just walked out and I got in a car and it felt really good. And then I got home and my wife's like, how were the shows? And I'm like, first one was great. I go, I didn't do the second one. And she was just like, you just left without saying anything. So then I felt a little guilty. And then a friend of mine like tested me because I didn't have my phone. I was going to text my friend and be like, dude, I bailed, but I didn't. So he just went. And he was like, where were you? I, I, I wanted to see you. And I go, yeah, I, I'm sorry, dude. I just had to split. And now I'm doing that thing where it's like, it was good enough for you, but it's not good enough for me. So I, like, I, like, like, I still felt like the Catholic guilt of it all. But I did the right thing because I would have ruined my goddamn night. You would yes. have. I would have ruined my goddamn night. It would have been soul crushing. And my streak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah, you yeah. get a streak, you stay in a fucking streak. Yeah. Somebody would have told you probably ten years ago plus and been, yeah, no, but you should do it because it keeps you humble. Yeah. You, you get to a point, it's like, no, or or hear me out. I've worked hard enough to earn my way out of these scenarios yes. and I shouldn't have to do those yeah. anymore. That doesn't make you an asshole for not doing it. And right? I, and by the way, I'm good on humble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have been humbled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know well, what I'm saying? I showed up with all the confidence in the world. And this, you know, this this business is brutal. It is. It's brutal. And you know, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, your parents think you're special. Yeah. There's no you ain't special. No. Keep yeah. working, asshole. Yeah. And that was, but that wasn't part of it. That uh, was not part of the process. But if you stay, it's self-inflicted at that point. You are doing that to yourself. I, pull, I got invited to a comedy show once, and I pulled yeah. up outside. Yeah. And I looked in. And the dude that was booking it was on stage. The TVs were still on behind him with sporting events, and people were shooting pool in front of him. And I'm like, Shit. and we're gone. I just kept going. I'm like, I don't, I'm not, what, what are we doing here? Right? Not, and, and it's just like, if you want to do that, if you're like early in your game, yeah. and you need the time, you just need to stand on a stage to say things, I can do that at home. We, I don't need but that. we did it. And that's yeah. what we were talking about at the beginning yeah. of the show. We did it. Right. Yeah. We showed up to the coffee shops yeah. where they're running the latte He's machine. <laughs> You can always tell who the barista hated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and we've done all that. And we actually did it for a long time. So yeah, without a doubt. Earned it. Like I yeah. said, you could move on and you know when you're when you're causing yourself right. undue pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so no, so like I, I felt and there was also that awesome just like playing hooky feeling too. That you don't get much as an adult. Just like, I'm out of here, man. I, just I made quit. the right decision. I just quit my fake job. And also, <laughs> let's be honest, it had a little bit to do with the fact that I didn't eat that much today when I was starving. And In-N-Out Burger was right down there the street. Was. Was and I was name. just like, I, I got to go. I gotta it's a better go. crowd. It's calling, yeah. yeah. So. That double-double is a better audience. So the low point, that low point has kind of a high point. Actually. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> it ended on burgers. <laughs> well, I went in and out, and it was too crowded, so. So it didn't end. But the taco truck was amazing. As oh, it okay. is. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, As yeah, it yeah. is. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good high-low. I That's think so. That's a good high, dude. I, yeah, I don't There's know. There's life lessons involved in your stories. I yeah. mean, it was, right? This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Are you guys... T- uh, How many people are at those uh, those cedars, by the way, the amphitheater? You're looking at... Uh, 10 grand? Give, give or take 10 grand. Fuck. It's nutty, dude. That's a big band. That's not even like a mid-level band. N- no, that's like fucking that's Third like Eye Blind of, re- reunion. I was going to say, that's like a lot of people bought my record, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not chump change. I mean, what does Metallica play? Well, a lot more than that. They do, They're right? like 20. But back in the day, that's where I would see them. At like RFK in DC. So like the difference is like uh, when I would talk to my buddy in Corn, I would, they would do like arenas. Yeah. And I would be like, hey, well, why don't you guys do stadiums like Metallica? And he just started laughing. He goes, <laughs> like Metallica. He goes, are you fucking kidding me, dude? He goes, we're not Metallica. I actually saw them, though, but they were opening for Metallica. Yeah, yeah. No, I saw them yeah. at the Coliseum. On, on, on Craig's request. Yeah, yeah, but his whole point, he was just like, yeah, dude, that's, dude, they're huge. Yeah. And I was like, oh, like, I go, well, like Smashing Pumpkins? And he goes, again, dude. You know how many records those guys have sold? And I'm like, but you guys, he goes, yeah, we're good. <laughs> this is my job. He goes, yeah, I don't have to go work, make ice cream, you right. know, scoops and shit. He yeah. goes, this is my job. He yeah. goes, but we're not that level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was just like, oh, it kind of reeled me in sure. too. Yeah. And then I remember when they did open for Metallica, I was in Alaska. <laughs> or no, I was going to a funeral. Oh, oh man. Make it and, worse. And Brian, my, he's the other guitarist, had, he's like, dude, you going to... See us with Metallica? And I go, ah, I go, my uncle died. I have to go to the funeral. He goes, dude, Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't that close to yeah. him, were you? He, that's what he did. He's like, he's dead. He's going to win the debate club with one word. <laughs> yeah. He's on Metallica, dude. Metallica. He's, I'm sure he'd oh, be shit. in heaven going like, yes, <laughs> go to Metallica. I go, I feel you. <laughs> But I'm not gonna go. But I can't go. Oh man, <laughs> too good, too yeah. good. Anybody else want to go high low? You can skip it if you want. Um, yeah, I could go. Uh, well, so, <laughs> <laughs> so the wife, yeah, had to have uh, open heart surgery. All right, we're gonna call that the low. Low, yeah. That's let's go with that. Low. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're leading with low. Leading okay. with yeah. <laughs> leading okay. With the low. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So that was a big deal, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm trying to be Captain Positive. Sure. You know? Well, you have to be. You have to be, right? Yes. And uh, the guy who comes in, the surgeon, he just comes in and he's just like, hey, how's everybody doing today? And you're like, good. He goes, all right. He talks real. Whew, yeah. Like a breeze. Yeah. Asian dude, just this cool California dude. And he just. My wife's like, I'm super nervous. He just puts his hand on her arm. He goes, don't be. <laughs> this is nothing. Like a Jedi kind of thing? Like Absolute sending, sending Jedi, Jedi vibes? move, dude. Yeah. Absolute Jedi move. He's just like, yeah, don't be. He goes, this is, this is going to take nothing. He's like, we're going to get in there. We're going to get this done. Three, four hours. You guys are going to come in and see her. Everything's going to be all right. I feel like we need more of that in our lives. Absolutely. I feel like the internet has exposed the nooks and crannies. Right. And and problems in every profession. Right. And it's almost like when you even go to the store, like a lot of times people aren't even good at helping you. No. It's just like, uh, dude, the fuck it, you fuck it. Yeah. It's There's not- something I've learned from being back in L.A., honestly, because, I, I, you know, say what you want about New York. Everyone is good at their job. Like nobody's fucking around. But why? Right. Huh? Why? Why are they good at that? I job? think because there's so many people waiting to take your job. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And New York's you, like a savage land. And I think it's I think it's embarrassing to not do a good job in New York. Right. I think there's I okay. think work is the religion. That's and I fair. think it says a lot about you. Whereas I'm gonna steal a little bit from Adam Carolla here in Los Angeles, everyone's working a job that's not the job they want. Right. And so they're like, I actually belong as a movie star. But so I'm going to do a shitty job like with your coffee. That's fair. And I would criticize them if I weren't that person many times in my life. Right. So, you know, I'm not 
uh, bagging on anyone, but right. that's what you need. That like we all need, need, and there's nothing wrong with now that the surgery is over. There's nothing wrong with like even if that guy's faking. Right. Give it to no. me. No. What, what, give what, it to me. Imagine what his uh, what his other speech could have been. Right. Like. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, <laughs> you, guys, you don't want to hear uh, that. I would. Uh, I'd pray to the maker. <laughs> Pray to the maker, guys. I'll be back. Yeah. This guy's like, you don't even need to pray on this one. Yeah. Like, I got this. You don't even need to call God. Look, I'm going to be honest. It's a 50-50 situation. <laughs> so the two people that were the most awesome is first, there's the guy you come in like a week before, and he tells you everything you're going to do. This guy, Brian, his name's Brian. Another Brian. Brian's All in right. this story. Yeah, yeah. Well, Long with a hair. Y or an eye? Huh? Uh, the, I want to say he was with an eye. Okay. okay, yeah, so better. Why, why is it more fun, though? I think Brian with okay, the eye is more you, fun. And this guy was that. rocking a Jesus look, long hair oh. and a ponytail, beard. What was he? He was a doctor? He's like, Was he lost? So what was he doing there? He's like a nurse. <laughs> That's hilarious. They're like, you again, get out of here. <laughs> Sorry about that. This guy keeps sneaking in. <laughs> no, I think he's just the guy who uh, he's just kind of lays it out for you, but he's not really a registered nurse. Okay. Is he a candy striper? Maybe, I don't know what those are. Maybe but. he is an RN of some level. Uh huh. You know? Either way, I just yeah. want to know if he was a doctor or not. Not yeah. a doctor. Yeah, okay. Definitely was he wearing open toed shoes? Crocs. Okay, that seems to be a standard. It is. Okay, all right. At least on the show world. Scrubs. <laughs> and maybe that's why he got him. But I will tell you. It's not, you know, medicine isn't the military, but you don't see a doctor with long hair that much. No. A male doctor with long hair. You don't. Oh. Yeah. And in this day of inclusion, I think they're like, you know what? We're going to let your long hair go. Yeah. All right. Since Tom retired, we're allowing hippies to work. Sure. Yeah. In no, this we, environment. I'll take a hip, yeah, yeah. I'll take a hippie. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, dude. Brian, yeah. I was just like, hey, if this guy does mushrooms on the weekends, I'm down. <laughs> Because he comes in, he's just like, hey, guys, how you doing? Again, Zen talk. And I go, this is this is what I need. This, this is, is who we need. This is great. It's the right way. So all every step of the way, this dude's just mellow. He never raises his voice past this level. You're going to come in here at 530 in the morning. You're going to register. We're going to take you into pre-op. Your family's going to come in and see you. Then we're going to take you in for the operation, which could take a couple hours. And then uh, they're going to bring you into the ICU. And then that's when your family can come see you again. <laughs> and I'm like, I go, Brian, I got to tell you, you were born for this. <laughs> you are the best person I've ever uh -huh. seen at this particular job. Yeah, yeah. And like, and the, I cracked one joke because there were jokes, right? Sure. They're going through these lists of things and you're like, oof, man, that's what she said. You're like, you just sure. want to keep popping them off yeah. and I, so I, th I slipped in one joke yeah and he said uh he was going through the family history and he goes uh anything with your dad and i let it play for a minute it was quiet she goes oh, i'm gonna go raging asshole count there he is boom yeah got the laugh yep. and i'm like i'm out you All knew right. when to go you yeah. knew when to kill it I did. you knew I yeah did. no one of those is is fine and appreciated and that's Not 15 it. after the third one <laughs> yeah. it's like all right i don't think you're taking yeah. this very seriously yeah, exactly listen dad jokes get out of here exactly. Enough be funny if he, that's when he cracked and he was like this is open heart surgery <laughs> right. there's no way she's gonna make it <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry just, you cracked has to, has to leave you broke the guy <laughs> he's just like you're gonna fucking not have to be here <laughs> by the way why is it that you have to have um heart surgery to meet nice people yeah like that, why, the, why, the world why? breaks you down right. gets you stressed out makes you feel like shit right. to the point where it ruins your physical health and right. you're like okay you've had enough and yeah now, yeah now we're gonna cut you open yeah. we're gonna be real nice about we're it gonna try and fix yeah. you yes and make you well again uh, so yeah so the high, then the high point would be that he comes out and everything's yeah. cool. The comfort. It went according oh. to exactly how, did it go exactly how they did. told you it was going to go? Yes. Like literally to the T. Yes. Yeah, it did. It went exactly like they said. And they kept saying like, Shh, you're so young. Don't even worry about it. That's that is good. true, by the way. Don't even worry about it. And when we went in, the guy across from us was old and I go, oof. <laughs> Mm. Well, that's us in like three seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, right around the corner. Yeah. I'm like, I'm more like Todd over there. Yeah. I might not make it out of this. Yeah. I go, my lady's fine. Right. Yeah, dude. She's totally doing good. 
when she's you, hitting all the marks. I'm, I'm hitting 50 this year, and I think you guys are already there. And it's yeah. like that's when you realize, like, oh. oh, I'm so far past 40. Oh yeah. Oh I'm yeah. I'm into the whole new thing. Oh yeah. Do you just realize, like, like life is just stepping on the gas? Oh yeah. And every year goes by in a month. Yep. And it's just oh, forget bonkers. It. Yep. I had a kid that started college. That blew my fucking mind. That's another thing. You guys have physical representations of how, yeah. How, yeah. how fast the years that have gone part. by. To yeah. me, it's just, so this is what happened to me a while ago. I, I just got back to LA and I was on a show and the poster was like a bunch of people I know and used to gig with. And I go, oh man, this poster looks like it's from 2005. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> and then I realized how long ago 2005 was. Yeah, exactly. Was 20 fucking years ago. Yep. Yeah. And I thought it was like last week. Yeah. You know? So I, I kind of was like, ooh, ooh. That's the good and the bad, right? Yeah. It means you're just living your life. The good news is all these clowns are still doing comedy. Yeah. I'm just living my life. I know these guys. I've known these guys forever. I made it. 2005 was an awesome year. Yep. I'm glad I've experienced it. Sure. But like 2045 is coming up, dude. Oof. Yeah. You know? Those are some brutal days ahead. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah let's yeah. not kid ourselves. Yeah. My kid's in college. And then that's all of a sudden your kid's just like, I'm going out. And they're gone. For the next 15 <laughs> years, I'm going out. They're leaving. And you're yeah, like, yeah. you just look at the wife and you go, hey, you yeah. want to go get lunch or some shit? Yeah. Cause sh oh, you must not have pets. <laughs> well, we do, but they're cats. So oh, you yeah. don't have, so, you can yeah. like yeah. leave That's five for minutes. like three yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we go do stuff. It's crazy. It's insane. Because yeah. you, you still think you're a fucking child. You still think you're a Barzor getting yeah. hammered yeah. off a beer shot special. Well, right. yeah. So when do you hit 50? Uh, this August, you guys are invited to the party. Boom. Okay, so make sure that you make a note in your calendar just to no longer look in mirrors and do not look at old photographs. Heard that. No, 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 you no. You will no. go through a spiraling depression. Yeah. No, I know. My, my wife is always <laughs> telling me how, how young I look, and I'm like, and you she, do. She'll say it, but she'll say a number. And I'll be like, here's 30. Yeah. Do you yeah. see a difference? Yeah, stop you know? doing that oh, part. Right. Stop looking at old folders. That's the part where you, when somebody will say like, oh, yo, you're, you're, I, didn't really, I thought you were a lot younger than that. And yeah. you feel good about it. And then somehow or another, some photo comes up. And you're like, no, yeah. no, that's young. Okay. Right. Oh, I don't look. Oh, not even close. Yeah. Nowhere near. I look like I ate 25-year-old Craig. <laughs> Like, and he's still... Yeah, but you still got so much hair and everything. You still so, look younger than yeah, your age. You got and nice that's what's hair. weird yes. about our generation. I think our generation specifically is, like, when we were in middle school in the 80s, if someone was 37, Ooh, they would dude. have, like, a fucking comb over. Yeah. Right. And they would look... I honestly think it's going down to the comb over. Like, nowadays, like, if you lose some hair, you, like, you call yourself out. Yeah. You show every bald spot on your head. Yeah, absolutely. And you look so much younger don't doing that. Don't fight it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Beyond that, I don't know what it is, but we don't look like our parents. Our parents looked older at this age. They did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a different time. I think it's because, like, I think it's also something where, like, we try to keep up a little bit, where our parents were just like, all right, I'm 22, I'm married, I'm 25, <laughs> I have kids, I'm retired at 65. Right. I'm not putting on a show for you motherfuckers. No. Yeah. Right. I'm not a movie star. I don't have an Instagram right. account. You know what they, this you is know, it. You're talking, you know what they, you know what they gave up on early, especially when you had family? Ego. Yes. They just let it go. That's right. why, the, you know, the dad guts and the mom got bigger mm. and like yeah. they got older fat because they just didn't give a shit. Yeah, right. no, they, they were, didn't care. Who am I trying to impress? No one. I, there was no like, a, like divorce was still a new concept. Yeah. Right. So even though it was starting, it's like people weren't like, yeah, I'm going to get divorced. Like nobody's like, <laughs> nobody's thinking about their options. It's yeah. like, boom. Yeah. You're locked in. This is it. You're riding it out. This is it. Before yeah. you ha you're married with kids, everything you do is showtime. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But then you get married and you have kids and it's your, the, your, your social circle changes and all those people, you don't, you don't need those people. Yeah. You don't need to, sh there's no showtime anymore. Right. Yeah. You literally have nothing to prove to any of them folks. No. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You're done. You don't, you were forced to hang out with them anyway because of the kids. <laughs> right. Right. So right. it's, it, you, you kind of do half check out. You're like that. That's it. I'm good. Yeah. No, I think we get there later and I think I'm getting there now. Even with my career, I'm like, who are, you, who are you trying to impress? You've done X, Y, and Z. You fucked up ABC. <laughs> right. Who cares? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you tried, and, and I see so many people, like, even the biggest guys, they can't st stay up there forever anyways. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like finally at the smell the roses point in my life. Oh, for you know? sure. I think that has a lot to do with being married. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> it does. Yeah. I remember when I first started comedy and I was emceeing in Milwaukee and like, 
you know, uh, you know, seasoned comedians would come in and they were they were older, yeah. you know, and you'd be like, yeah, we're gonna go get some shots and be partying all night. They're like, no, I'm good. I'm gonna go back to the hotel, sleep because I got to get on the treadmill at six just to stay alive. You're yeah. like, wait, what? Like, what's up, dude? It's comedy. It's, yeah. it's like this is what we do, right? Like this lasts forever. They look right at you hard. like, do you even stand up, bro? <laughs> like, why? Like, like, why are you doing this? <laughs> why are you doing this? You know, uh, you know, I. That's exactly how I looked at it, and now. I'm like, even when I was drinking in Nashville on Friday night, I was like, this is the dumbest fucking thing I could possibly be doing. Right now. <laughs> I just poured it down your know, throat. You know, but I'm just like, it was kind of like a, like a party where I was, I was there, I was kind of there, and I was like, well. <laughs> when in Rome. I'm not yeah. standing here sober. <laughs> <laughs> That's called anxiety drinking. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. And you know what? It did the trick. Yes, it does. I had about three drinks, and I was like, this is all right. Yeah, and I actually, I actually did say to myself, like, oh, this is why I used to drink all the time, because I'm pretty fucking even right now. <laughs> and I don't, I don't feel self-conscious. I actually even feel cool. <laughs> See, I can't. You you were good with the weed. I don't know where you're at on the weed thing. Like, I couldn't do the uh, the 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 smoke weed after show and hang out with people. Mm. It uh, it, it always kind of just didn't sit well. One time, I got too much, and I thought everybody in the room was from my high school, right. and it was a reunion that I forgot about, and I was just like, didn't like what was going on, this is so why, I stopped that. This shit. is why I still like weed so much, is because I can't handle it. But do you do it publicly? Fuck. No. Okay. Every once in a while, I'll get cocky when I don't want to drink at a party. I'm like, well, I'm not going to drink at this party. I'm going to bring an edible. And if I have my two beers and then I still want a buzz, I'm going to take this edible. Right. Cut to an hour later, I just walk up to my wife and I'll be like, I'm going home. <laughs> because the words just, they can't get out of my mouth right now. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure oh, out what other people good. are talking about. And I'm just going home, and and right. it, and it kind of works. Like at that point, it's like, go home. I can drink all night long. It doesn't. It does, but but I don't like drinking all night long. Right, right, right. No, so that's where I'm at. I even like can barely handle weed, if my wife is in the in the room at home. I'll be self conscious in front of her. But who are these dudes? She, and she's never gonna judge me. But who are these people that can do weed and they're like super creative, and they can have like in depth conversations that make sense? And I'm like, I do it. And I'm like, none of those. I I don't hit any of those boxes. It's, a, it's another one word debate. Practice. Yeah. <laughs> if you, that's it. <laughs> if you smoke proof. weed all day every day, yes, you can handle anything. That's just while how you're you doing are. It. The downside to that is you're pretty much just breaking even, right? Like yeah. it's, you're just like, well, it's like coffee in the morning for me. It's like, I got to have coffee. It's not like some huge, great thing. It's right. just like, whew, thank God. And that's kind of like a mental addiction to, to weed. Right? Yeah. I mean, like, uh, what, what are we doing here? Yeah. But so some people like, like Seth Rogen talks about how he just smokes weed all day, every day. Guy's a millionaire. Yeah. It works for him. It yeah. works for a lot of people. That's what I'm saying. I yeah. wish that it, that's what I wanted and I didn't get it. Yeah. I can't do anything else. Like I don't drink. Okay. At all. Not at all. Have I you have, ever drank? Yeah. Tried it, oh. didn't work for you. Okay. All right. Yeah, I did. The last time I drank is when you and me did the road trip. As you should have been drinking. I took him on the worst fucking road trip. <laughs> and I had the worst hangover. <laughs> he drank this beer called Slayer, right? Yeah, because like, like, it said Slayer. Like the bands. But, yeah. But it was actually like a sleigh and it had like Santa Claus on it. Yeah. Oh, okay, I think you're saying it Slayer, like, it's going to destroy you. It was darker than like a Starbucks it Americana. <laughs> it, was. it was like he was drinking mud. It was one of those like 12% alcohol beers. And oh, he ordered yeah. it because of the name. Right. right. Oh, boy. Right. He should have been drinking a Pilsner. Yeah, you don't get back in the game with 12 well, plus. He didn't know. And I, didn't I, know. I honestly didn't know enough to tell him at the time. I right. was like, How many did you have? He just had one. I probably had one, but I'd already had my two or three vodka. Uh, oh. Uh, okay, dude. So you can't, That's you, not you just can't one. Mix. Yeah, yeah. I'm an unprofessional drinker. Not only can you not mix, you can't just get back in the game like that. What are you doing? Yeah. And you thought this was going to be okay? Yeah, so that... Uh, well, he was okay on stage. I was all right. I, I was all right. Good. I slurred. So you didn't yeah. notice. So he probably no, did I, I was in my own world doing my own okay, thing. Okay, all right. Yeah. There we go. So then the next day, I was hung over like a donkey was just kicking the inside of my brain all day. I was like, Fuck I felt this. so bad for him because I felt like an instigator. Like I brought him on this tour, and like I, I drinking like a maniac back then. 
so like I thought I was just like setting the tone for this road life <laughs> right. for him. I felt so guilty. <laughs> well, but then, but then he had a joint and he was fine. My cousin, sh <laughs> my cousin showed up in Seattle. Okay, and I was just like, oh, I'm so hungover. He's like, Oh, here I got you. I'll set you straight. Fucking smoked Did it? out. Oh yes. Got rid of your headache. Gone. I thought the whole headache was dehydration. I was though. a thousand it percent is, better. But the weed the is a painkiller. Pain okay. Yeah, so yeah, one yeah, time yeah. I did this. I did this fluke travel where I didn't drink any coffee in the morning because mm. I wanted to sleep on the plane. And then I go to a bar that night and I'm having a couple drinks and it just hits me like this huge headache. Mm. And I go, Oh, I didn't have any coffee, but it's like 10 o'clock at night. I'm like, what am I going to do? Drink coffee. I'll just, I'll go to bed. I'm tired. I got in bed. I couldn't sleep. I had this crazy, crazy headache. And I go, Oh, I have some, I have some weed. I'll just smoke the weed. I'll just smoke the weed. I smoked the weed and Everything was fine. So if you want to get off coffee, start smoking, start smoking weed. weed. Yeah. All right. So I haven't been smoking actual weed. I said, I said to the wife, I said, "Man, I haven't smoked weed in like a week." And she goes, <laughs> "Uh, no." I well, when did we do it? And she goes, "Yeah, that was." Two days ago. Okay, uh, all right. And so. then I go, okay, so two days. <laughs> so the weed does affect timelines a little bit. Big time. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're talking time wars. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Do you want to slow down this aging process yeah. we're talking about? That's one way for sure. Get, get trapped in your brain for about three it's hours. It's like, what do then. you mean when you say 2024? <laughs> like, that's the actual year or we're headed there? I will say I have been doing edibles, and, and sometimes when it kicks in right, it does slow down time, and I like that. I was like, oh, finally, everything's not in a hurry anymore. Like, when oh, it yeah. does it right, yeah. you're like, wow, that minute lasted like four minutes. I'm yeah. liking this. Let's, let's do this more. I find instead of like 10 things I'm juggling in my head it's just all of a sudden just one thing yeah <laughs> and yeah. so I can't completely escape but at least I can't go anywhere or do I go well you can't solve this problem right now you're high that's pretty yeah. much the comfort of it <laughs> it's, just cut that off like yeah. I shouldn't be sending emails I shouldn't be doing this right. I shouldn't be doing that I should be sitting on the couch watching television I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing right now so I have so, a, yeah. I have an extremely high tolerance yeah and so these ones I've now found at the product is stizzy i shouldn't even advertise for them but uh why why not why not yeah so stizzy are the jesus of weed as far as i'm concerned okay all right that and, and, have... and the guy named brian at the Dude, hospital yeah okay. all right. yeah in fact he should work for stizzy so you're gonna want to take one of these in the morning and uh i take one of these i'm good yeah i'm not high you know, I'm not, oh, yeah. I mean, we'll be laughing at some goofy shit. And then I'm like, I guess we're higher than I think, mm -hmm. but I'm not stupid. Like I could, people could come up and talk to me and I'm not going to be like, what? Mm -hmm. Like what? No, Craig's, Craig's absolutely fine on the weed. Just absolutely fine on the weed. And I think most people are absolutely fine on the weed. They just think they're not. Right. And it's like a panic. Right. Oh, oh my God. Well, that's Everyone what happens with edibles, right? What? That's what happens with edibles, right? Because it takes a while to kick in. Is sure. that where a lot of the panic comes from? When it, when it, you forget and then it hits you? That's the best, is when you forgot you took it and yeah. you're talking, you'll be like, yeah. hey, pass the soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I get to eat a cheeseburger right now. This is going to be so great. The next 15 minutes? Yeah. I'm going to be a man. I've got television. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, life is so good. <laughs> You're not wrong. I've been so high before, and like, just I'm going to bed, and I look at my one bedroom apartment, and be like, I got it, man. I'm not living went, on the streets. In the morning, I'm just like, I'm fucked. I got it. I'm like an octopus. I'm like, ah. yeah, yeah. And then at night, I'm just like, dude, you're crushing it. Right. You're cr you you did it. Yeah, dude. So I'll say you paycheck to paycheck did it. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll say the combination of working downtown and seeing homeless people, and you're like, well, I'm not that guy. Right. Yeah. I need to lose weight. That's my biggest problem. Paycheck to paycheck, whatever. Bills are paid. We're not homeless. Yeah. I'm high. Right. My wife's cool. The kids got good grades. I'm a we're fucking crushing it. I think some people might argue it's like, oh, you smoke weed. It makes you feel like you got it made. You dumbass. Like, yeah. But like, what are you supposed to do? Be at Mach 3? Yeah. After 8 p.m.? Right. It's over. The day is over. It's done. It's time to relax. Yes. You know? And at a certain point, you just, 
you've tried and you got to be happy with what you have. That's or else it. you're just not going to be happy. Right. Perfect example. We we talked about this earlier about the the comfort of being in the circle of friends that are comedians. Yeah. Now we've all been in this situation, I assume, where it's been you you've done a show whatever, it's a group of comedians and then people outside the circle come in and they're the high octane people. The yes. people that come from the high octane world <laughs> and it fucks everything up. It does. Like everyone's like Bro's got to go. Yeah. Too much. Right. right. I don't understand the too much. That's a very like, right? Like 1980s America, like where it's like, you got to keep going, man. You got to have seven boats, seven houses, <laughs> lots of cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm going to teach you to make your skills yeah. and your down points right. work for you. Yeah. yeah. I was nobody, right. nowhere, nothing. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's the thing when you're with comedians, you're like, you're with a group of partially defeated people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it feels good. We, mediocrity is success yeah. i don't need to impress anybody at this table and, and you could be like oh that's a dirt bag that's like buddhism that's like a whole it religion is. it's You're a right. whole religion it's not it's not a low self-esteem way to think at all it's a way to stay sane it is yeah it because is. you can be happy with what you have and still try. Right, and still try. Because the truth is you're gonna have to work to keep what you have <laughs> absolutely to keep this yeah up. yeah right yeah yeah, I'm working on a script with this dude right now, and it's actually good. That's another thing you get to where you get like caught up in the success or whatever, and you go, "All right, I might not like super crush it, but like, what do I want to do?" And that's when shit gets exciting. It does. That's when it got exciting for me. I mentioned 2005 and 2004. I was like turning 30, which back then I thought was a devastating. Big deal. Yeah, devastating. and I was like, "Well, I, I, you know, I can't do this shit forever." Blah blah right. blah. I think I'm gonna quit. And I was like, but before I quit, I'm going to do like what I want to do. And right. that's kind of when my career started to work out because you're actually doing, you know, like what you want to do. And there's right. something authentic that connects with people about that. Yes. You know, and then I got caught up. Like once I started getting road gigs, like, oh, I got to be this funny bone comedian. And that's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so now I'm back to just like doing what I want to do, hoping for the best. Yeah, and I can't. You also realize you're not. I'm not going to be like going hard at 65. So just enjoy this. Enjoy what you you absolutely for. Enjoy what dude. you got. Yeah, reboot. <laughs> I was also thinking like you know, should we? I do want to start Roadheads again, but I was like. I want to do the full charge power hour again. Let's Sweet. get. I called Craig up and I was like, "Do you want to do this?" Because I know we we did it for a long time, and, right? And you know we got what we got out of it, and I was like, "Does does Craig want to do it?" Craig wanted to do it. Hell yeah! I'm already it's looking so at the fun. senior menu, so why wouldn't I want to do yeah. this, dude? I, I I swim at the pool by your house, and I noticed like there's a pass. It's usually four dollars a day, but when you turn fifty. It's twenty five dollars for eighty eight swims. Here it comes, buddy. And I'm like, dude, I'm getting my full, my first senior citizen discount right. this year. Right. I said somebody asked you once because I didn't. Sh <laughs> I, I I grew a beard. When I grow a beard, I just look. Mm -hmm. Old. Yeah, yeah, really old. When right. the gray beard comes in, it's like you know when you're younger, the beards look pretty. If you can grow a beard, you can yeah. grow a nice groomed, dark beard. But when you get older and you do it, it just it looks a little like you okay, man. But right, yeah. like yeah, yeah. So it's a little unibomber. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was at a store, and they were like, you know, go ahead and pop in your uh, your senior discount. And I was so offended because I hadn't gotten there yet because oh, I had son of a my bitch. gray beard was early. I'm like, slow down, okay? Hell I'm not there yet. Down. And then I said, but just out of curiosity. Like, what is that discount? What is that discount? Like? And they said 15%. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know that. I'm like, so I'll be okay when I hit that day. I didn't realize how much money I would be saving. Yeah, I'll be taking that discount. I can get over my yeah, ego yeah, now, yeah. you oh, know? Oh, trust me, dude. Whenever we drive by, like, senior mobile home park, Karen's like, hey, look where we can move in here pretty soon. And I'll just start rolling. Well, yeah, because I did a quote-unquote old folks home, which they don't call it that anymore. And that's how I ended up at the gig. They call it a, a community. A retirement community. Yes. Retirement community. And it's yeah. fifty-five and up. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Two years. Again, baby. that's how I got tricked into doing the gig. I'm like, what does this mean? I'm like, is this an old folks' home? They're like, it's a community. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll do the gig. I needed the money. <laughs> yeah. And it was a disaster. <laughs> it was, yeah, it this was is an old folks home. So fucking painful in a year when I was just having the toughest time making a living. And I was so fucking depressed on this stage. It wasn't a stage. It was just like in this community Part center. of a room. And I had a walkout 
from this woman with a walker. <laughs> oh man, the slowest walkout so ever. It's the slowest walk out of all How time. How many jokes did you told by the time she got to the door? I told three jokes. <laughs> After we were leaving the... This and, reminds me of when the Nazis invaded. And I just was so... <laughs> out of here. I was so like... Like, I just... The crowd wasn't on my side. So I couldn't even be like, this is the slowest walk out of all time. I just had to like... <laughs> uh, that was that it. Had, Don't you say that about Mabel. I just had <laughs> to like, eat it. I just had to eat it. You know what I mean? Girl, excuse me, Matt. I'd like to make an announcement. Jello's ready, everybody. <laughs> Jello shots? No, oh, just Jello. Just Jello, sir. <laughs> Whew, oh, that's too great, dude. The Walker walkout. That's yeah, like no, that the was, worst. That was devastating. I got uh, excited to do a gig once when I had kids, and somebody else was doing a fundraiser or comedy show for their elementary school, and I thought, this is my, you know, I mean, that's my alley. I'm like, let's right. do this. Let's jam this And out. I, sh she went up first, and there were no lights on the stage, and it also happened to be a costume party. Oh, my God. And uh. so not only were the comics not lit, um, everyone was dressed like it was <laughs> Halloween. Did and people have masks on? Some did. Um, and also, you know, so you mix costumes and alcohol. We all know how great sure. that always yeah, goes yeah, when you sure. want to add, you know, someone talking on a stage to go with that, mm -hmm. right? So there's that, and you have to remember, and I don't know why I didn't think about this. They don't have their kids tonight. <laughs> yeah. Right. They're not interested yeah. in anybody. I don't yeah. care who would have went on that stage. Yeah. Right? And I get up there, and some motherfucker dressed up like Fred Flintstone would not leave me alone. And I didn't know wow. how to handle Flintstone, dude. <laughs> I didn't because I was wow. like I can't make I mean I can't make yeah. fun of her for being dressed like Flint Flintstone because sure. everybody else was dressed yeah. up like an idiot too yeah. right <laughs> and I, it was at that moment that I realized how ridiculous it was and I was like yeah all right sometimes you just got to take the L right Thank and you, you just you take good the L. night you you finish up you find a way to get in and you find a way to get out yeah. you know? I Absolutely. I flew all the way to Kansas City one time drove two hours north to do some corporate Christmas party for a bunch of farmers and that that made farming equipment. I was thinking about it last night, like just cringe. Like I put in all that effort just to like make things uncomfortable <laughs> for a half an hour. And there was moments where like, okay, it's going, it's going, it's rolling. And then it was back to just, uh, oh, that's God just damn. closing to silence, you know, oh. like best joke, nothing. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Yes. I just felt like, and it's just so weird. Like they're like, if I still think about these things, I'll just be like, "Oh God, damn it!" Yeah. Like, and I don't feel bad for me. I feel bad for them. It's so ridiculous. Well, and I, I just I don't feel. I feel like I've gotten to the point where we don't need to bring comedy into anything else that's already happening. It's not a hybrid sport. Like, let's do comedy at the comedy club. Yeah. Or if you came to see it at another venue, that's it. I can't tell you how many times I've been involved in charity functions where they they're, they're with the organizers and they're like, let's get a comedian. I'm like, no, it's a bad idea. I like literally don't even ask for an, like, I don't try to get a yeah, vote. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, let me go ahead and stop you there. Yeah. There's so many other things you could do. Okay. Yeah. You could, why don't we just put a dog on the stage and people yeah. can be like, oh, look, a doggy. Like right. they would and care they more back. about that. Right. Yeah, let's get a swing band. But I also don't care about the bad events anymore i mean because everybody has them i yes. went to a charity event and and conan o'brien at his peak was the host of it and no one listened to him the whole time he was on stage wow. it was brutal wow. yeah. and i look at it and i go uh, you know I and mean, if anybody's ever seen seinfeld that that, that that movie comedian back in the early yeah, 2000s right. he got heckled and he's like literally how famous i think that line was what how famous do you have to be to not yeah. be heckled or whatever yeah. so it's like you kind of know <laughs> yeah no he was actually talking about that. he was he goes how fucking famous do you have to be and he was talking about how like no one listened to him, like no one listened to him. Yeah, because he did a pop in at a comedy club That's in New Jersey, crazy. Yeah. and nobody gave a shit. No, can you imagine? No, That's nuts. but I also on the flip side of that, I never stopped reminding Craig about a bar gig we did where he damn near got carried off the stage <laughs> as the champion of the night. And I've said I've never to this day seen any comedian get that much love. I literally uh, thought they wanted to carry him out like Rudy at the end of the game, yeah, like, you know, on the shoulders, and right? Like, this guy. 
this guy forever. Bring yeah. him back. Bring him back now. What, and for all what happened? Where was this and what happened? Like, what are we talking about? Chester, here? He calls the place Chester Good Times. <laughs> Is that what it's called? I don't remember. Chester what Drawers. Chester, Chester Drawers. Drawers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Orange County, exactly. right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Somewhere in Orange County. Doesn't exist anymore. No, because it was 20 years ago. That, and I, I still to this day have never forgotten <laughs> For those the that don't know, it was in the strip mall in Orange County. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's in the middle of nowhere, yeah. but we used to make the trek down there. Yeah. For sure. And we would we would just crush down there. Like, yes. they were so happy to have us. Yes. Sounds like Craig took the. Uh, Craig, yeah. Yeah, and I was even up there, like, going, Fuck am I doing right tonight? <laughs> That's like I mean I've had fine I've done fine sure. plenty of shows. Yeah. But I was like unbelievably uh. doing well. It's like yeah, of course, this is the show I don't film. <laughs> that's that's how I used to go in Alaska too, right? Like you like when you first started, oh. you you went straight to it was almost like your one man show. I, You're like, yeah, yeah I'm the drummer much. in this band now. Yes. I'm doing this one man show. Yeah. So yeah, Karen. The first show I ever did, Karen just calls and she goes, "Hey, they want to do comedy here at this place she was working at, which was a a pub, mm-hmm. and this lady served food and and had good. It was a nice new bar." And she goes, I signed you up. And I'd never actually, I'd only done comedy a few times. I signed you up. Yes. She's all <laughs> like, you're performing on this date. And I'm like, huh, sounds great. <laughs> sounds great. Like 70 people showed up. Nice. That was more than it showed up for our band <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> what does that say? That message was sent. Yeah. So everybody, because like we, we, we would play so often, people would like, eh. Sure. I'm going to go fishing this weekend instead. (laughs) Yeah, I'll catch you next weekend. But comedy? Freeze on the ocean. Hell yeah. We're there, buddy. Salmon can wait. (laughs) Yeah, that's maybe the show. title of your your, your comedy the show. Salmon can wait. That's hilarious. I did that. I did that one time. We were hanging out with these people after a show, and like, uh, I kind of knew how it was. I even called it out to a younger comic. I go, "That guy's gonna try to fight me." <laughs> we, we were, I was working with Bert, and like Bert wanted to hang out with these people. So, but uh, so I said, "But I, said, I guess I'm hanging out." I go, "That guy's gonna try to fight me." <laughs> this guy wants to be a comedian, and I called somebody else. Too and like everything happened. Uh, check, check. That I Matt predicted. Adamus. But this one guy was just talking about how he was full charge Adamus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one guy was was like telling me how funny he was. He wanted to be a comedian. Oh, blah blah God. blah. And I'm with the younger comic who runs a show, you know, like an uh, alternative room down the street. Right. And I go, hey man, can we get this guy on the show on Wednesday? And he goes, yeah. I go, you're booked. <laughs> Put your money where your, your mouth is. <laughs> and he goes, "What Wednesday? Wednesday? This Wednesday? Oh yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh yeah, I guess. No big deal. Either you're a comic or you're not, buddy. Yep. It comes down to Wednesday. That's and right. it, it, sh- <laughs> it shut him up pretty quick. <laughs> we'll see Wednesday, baby. Yeah. So that's when you met Tom Segura. <laughs> what? That was the, the, the that was Tom. <laughs> and then yeah, next yeah, thing you know, he killed it. And that kid is Tom Segura. <laughs> Just destroyed. <laughs> Turns out he's really good at it. And you know, I'm responsible for booking him on this first show. <laughs> You're welcome, America. Oh, dude, that's too funny. <laughs> uh, where are we at with time, Aaron? We are at an hour and seven. Oh. What's that? Hour oh. seven. Hour and seven. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's going to do it for the full charge power hour. Yeah. This video for Craig, though. Do we want to show that? Or? Um... Yeah, let's try it. Do you want to? You guys try have it? anywhere you want to be? No, no. Okay. Oh my God, no. Okay. <laughs> I just have. I, no, I have places I don't want to be. That's yeah. yeah that's is that right. a better? Is that same, better same I, question. Yeah. <laughs> same <laughs> question. Yeah, let's check out this video. Let's see let's, if we can mine oh, this oh. for anything funny. Let's oh. check out. Well, let's just try out some equipment. There we this go. This is exciting. Right? We got a clip. You this clip. is a security. Okay. All right. So okay. Oh, here we go. Here, if we pause it here. What are we watching here? Yeah, pause it here. Yeah, let's explain. So this guy. So you see this guy. Where are we? Tell people where we are. Do you have a teleprompter circle thing? I don't. So, so we're, we're at Union Station. And right. let's let's just backtrack a little bit. In episode one of the Full Charge Power Hour reboot, uh, Craig talked about how there was a guy who claims Craig approached him and attacked yeah, him that i yeah verbally assaulted him screaming i hate you i hate you i hate you craig's version of the story and i think the video's version of the story is this guy approached yeah. craig yeah so you'll see this guy he's in a walker mm-hmm. and he stands up so right here in this left middle corner well you see my fat ass walking past 
Uh, I see you. So this second chandelier, uh, we look below that. I'm the big guy just to the left of this green looking uh, circular thing. Oh, you're flexing uh -huh. a little so bit. So yeah. this is train fest. Uh -huh. So these are all model trains. <laughs> now behind me, you'll see there's a guy in a walker. So I'm heading. Hold on, hold on. This is train fest. Where are all the women? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Nice. So the guy in the walker. I'm headed toward. There's two firemen. They're either with me or they're already there at this door. I'm headed over here to open this door. This guy. You'll see him stand up. Boom. Right there. He just stood up. Uh huh. Got his walker. He's like, oh, what's going on over here? This guy. <laughs> It's the most annoying person you'll ever meet. Dun, dun. And so he, yeah, dun, yeah, dun. yeah. So he comes in, positions himself so that he can talk and kiss the fireman's ass, which uh -huh. people do all the time. Sure, who wouldn't? People love firemen. I and do. And they look great. They look great. They save lives. Now he's sitting in his walker. <laughs> he's chatting with them about how awful Metro is and people like me for locking the doors. I'm unlocking these fucking doors. And they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then he starts in on me like, what's your name? Okay. Who do you work for? I ignore him. So he gets, he, he needs to get closer. Yeah. Here he moves in a little close. Touched me. He, maybe you've seen him just reach out and he touches me. Yeah. Hey. And uh, I, at some point, I turn around and tell him, I don't like you. I know who you are. <laughs> I say his name to his yeah. face, and I say I let him know that everybody I know that knows who he is doesn't like him. Wow. And that sends him into the biggest little girl fit tizzy you've ever heard in your life. Uh -huh. What do you mean you don't like me? And he just loses his fucking And mind. then he took you to court. And over then he the took insult. me to court over that. Did he tell you I was his attorney? Were you really? Wow. So Mr. Irwin here yeah. shows up. Yeah. You know, I yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that part. Of I it, was yeah. like, oh, I'm going to get fined or sure. I don't even know. What is the crime for insulting an old oh, man? Oh, so the, so the crime, what he was, <laughs> what he was trying Ryan, to what, do. Did you take someone to court when they asked you for the senior discount? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Your Honor, my feelings were hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Until I found out I was going to get a 25% discount. <laughs> Can't wait to be 55, to be honest. That would be my damages. <laughs> so he was trying to get it to where I couldn't be at Union Station, uh -huh. which is like my sure. job. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, he was trying to get it to, uh, a restraining order. Right. Where I can't be a hundred. Okay, that makes hundred yards yeah. within him or yeah. what, around him or whatever. That's so funny because that just means he can't go to Union Station. That's my thing. <laughs> That's I'm where the he one that actually be. works. You there. have to be there. Yeah. So part of me was like, "Fine. Yeah, right. Let it happen. Yeah. You're the one that will have to leave every yeah. damn time. <laughs> Jesus. You have to go to the Glendale train station. So my man shows up to have my back. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And the... kind of talk me off the ledge. Yeah. Did you? Did he? Did he tell you how it went down? In yeah, there yeah, about it's... the no nonsense judge. Yes. That we bear, bore witness to. But did he tell you? Did you tell him the part where I said, "Okay, now remember." <laughs> if you've been watching what's been going on, he lets people bury themselves when they start talking. He does. And he gets upset when you aren't talking facts or so, any information. So, so you guys saw a couple cases before right. yours? He had about six before yeah. him. So, so were you witness. actively doing this or you were like, I got to look for this or you just saw it? No, we just were yeah. witnessing it happen yeah. in real time, right? Uh -huh. I said, so he's no nonsense. So I said to Craig, don't answer any questions or share any information let that he's not asking. Ahead. Yeah. Let him tell his case, and he'll literally talk himself out of a case. Digging a hole. Yeah, and he's right. <laughs> but like Brian you... saw all that. Like, you know, he could be zen about it. I'm like nervous buckets sure. over did here. Did he tell you what he did instead? What? what? <laughs> he gets up there, and he goes, so uh, you're the... Uh, you're the uh, defendant? Uh, the defendant. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, uh, I am the defendant. Um... Do you have uh, your paperwork? <laughs> Listen, here's what happened, uh, your, uh, your Honor. I I just I just got this thing in the mail like the other day. Yeah. And I didn't have. And he just literally starts vomiting information. Yeah. The one thing I told him I not did. to do, and the judge goes, "Stop." I didn't ask you that. Stop. I don't want to hear it. I didn't ask you any of those questions. Yeah. Are you Are you prepared? Yeah. Yes or no, Craig? Yes. yes. 
<laughs> it's uh, never said a word again. He yeah, never yeah, asked Craig never another asked information. Just yeah. asked yeah. him if he was if he was here. I feel like you have that power, Brian. And I've experienced <laughs> it like we can have a rational conversation where right. I agree with you, and then we walk out the door, and then I do exactly what <laughs> I'm thinking of the Schwarzenegger exactly scenario. It's the right. Where I'm like, it's happening. Why is this happening? <laughs> right. I know not to do this. <laughs> No, he does. And then you're like, anyway, <laughs> I hear I hear you, but check this out. And your guy's former boss, everybody's former boss, your still boss came in. Pete showed up. And he showed up. And then he tried talking to the judge. Like, somehow or another, he was involved. The judge is like, I don't know what's going on. Like, everybody, stop talking. <laughs> well, I walk in because they call you forward. I walk in. Pete just came with me. <laughs> And he goes, are you the lawyer? Oh, my God. And Pete goes, no, I'm his boss. He goes, don't need you here. I'll call you it's if I need you. It's got to be so frustrating for someone that knows the law. Right. And is like, why are you incriminating yourself? Yeah. Why are you doing more than seriously, you have to do? Please, he was probably like, please let Pete be a lawyer. No. Please let a lawyer be here. Right. I can't deal with this amateur hour right. any longer. It's eight hours a day. He's like, I want to go to lunch. Uh, yeah. I got six more of these bullshit cases. We thought we were going to be there for hours. Yes. And this guy would be like, case 26, let me hear what you have to say. All right, uh, you, you win, you lose. Next, yeah. what? And like literally yeah. it was like. That guy was just swatting him down, dude. That's that's good. Welcome to, know. to dumbass filing court. <laughs> that's what that guy was in charge of. There's nothing serious is coming through his door. But Craig had all these videos. He had all this paperwork. Yes, sure. like, I had mean, a he stack literally. Of shit. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes you see those lawyers wheeling in. Like, yeah. Stuff. Like Craig was ready. Yeah. And that guy wanted the the judge was I like. Brought- 500 letters to Santa Claus, you know? <laughs> I even, Case dismissed. Yeah. I even at the end, after he shot the shit down, he goes, I'm throwing this out. I go, but I have, and he goes, I don't need anything else from you, buddy. He's All like, right. you won. I think that's going to do it for the full charge power uh, hour. Reboot. <laughs> Episode two. Um, hit us, give us some money. Patreon.com forward slash the full charge. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Boom. Peace. Peace.